Hey guys, in this video we'll be looking at the extraction of aluminium from bauxite. So stay tuned. If you haven't watched the video on the extraction of iron and tin by method of reduction using carbon, then the video links are in the corner. But in this video we are looking at aluminium and it is done using electrolysis. The two main methods used for extractions of metals from their ores is either by electrolysis or by heating with carbon. Reduction with carbon, this can be done in a blast furnace. So for aluminium, we can see the position of aluminium is above carbon in the reactivity series of metal. The video on reactivity series of metal is at the corner. So since aluminium is above carbon, it is more reactive than carbon. And therefore, carbon cannot be used as a reducing agent to reduce aluminium oxide into aluminium and therefore we need to use electrolysis remember carbon is the more favored method is the preferred method because carbon is abundantly available and it is a cheaper process compared to electrolysis electrolysis is very expensive whenever we can we want to use heating with carbon but in this case we cannot so we have to use electrolysis <laughs> The extraction of aluminium in this electrolytic cell is known as the hall herald process. Now before we can extract aluminium from its oxide, we have to purify it first. And the oxide of aluminium is called bauxite. Bauxite is the ore that contains aluminium oxide. But it also contains some impurities such as iron 3 oxide. Here iron 3 oxide is an impurity because we are not trying to extract iron. We are trying to extract aluminium. So iron 3 oxide is an impurity, but it can form up to about 20%, 20%, 20 to 25 percent in bauxite. So when we see bauxite, it has a reddish color. This is because of the presence of the iron 3 oxide. And then we also have lots of sand, as with all ores, because all ores are basically rocks that contain the metal oxide or the metal compound that we want to extract the metal from. So first, we do a purification using sodium hydroxide. And this is known as the Bayer process. We are not going to go through the Bayer process. But what happens is bauxite is purified to alumina. And alumina is simply purified aluminium oxide. So we have an almost pure aluminium oxide. This is an example of the setup of the electrolytic cell. We have the positive terminal and the negative terminal. The positive terminal is of course connected to electrodes. And this will serve as the anodes as with all electrolytic cells. When it's connected to the positive terminal, it is the anode. And then we have the negative terminal here at the bottom. And this is connected to the cathode. So generally, this is the setup. There is a hood where air can escape, waste gases can escape. And then we have the molten aluminium oxide here, the alumina here in a molten form inside the cell like this. So this will act as the electrolyte here. Now, along with the alumina, we add cryolite. Cryolite is sodium aluminium fluoride. This sodium aluminium fluoride, cryolite, the function of it is to reduce the melting point of alumina, aluminium oxide. Originally, the melting point of aluminium oxide is about 2000 degrees Celsius. When we add cryolite, the melting point of alumina is brought down to about 900 to 1000 degrees Celsius. So it's more than halved. So we save a lot of energy there because energy is needed to melt the solid aluminium oxide to the molten form. Remember, solid form cannot conduct electricity. Electrolysis cannot be done on solid aluminium oxide. We need to melt it into the molten form before we can perform electrolysis. So the electrolyte here is actually just aluminium oxide. Cryolite is not part of the electrolytic process. The function of cryolite is just to bring down the melting point of aluminium oxide. Since aluminium oxide is the only electrolyte, then the ions present in the electrolyte are just aluminium and oxide. There are only two ions present here. There's no water because it is not an aqueous solution. It is a molten aluminium oxide. So here, these electrodes are made from graphite. Graphite is an allotrope of carbon. It is a specific form of carbon. So graphite is used as the anode here, the positive electrode. At the anode, anions are going to be discharged. 
Here we only have two ions. We have aluminium, which is the cation, and oxide, which is the anion. At the anode, the oxide ions are going to be discharged. The oxide ion will release electrons to form oxygen gas. So here, at the electrodes here, oxygen gas is produced. And remember, all this is done under very high temperatures. And under very high temperatures, the oxygen here that just formed due to the discharge of the oxide ions will react with the carbon electrode. So carbon will react with oxygen to form carbon dioxide. And because of that, you will see that the electrode will get used up. And therefore, these positive electrodes, these graphite electrodes have to be constantly changed. Then at the bottom here, we have a graphite cathode. So at the cathode, here we only have aluminium as the cation. So aluminium is going to be discharged. And aluminium is a cation, so in order to be discharged, it has to accept electrons. Aluminium ions will accept electrons to become aluminium, molten aluminium here at the bottom, at the cathode. So this molten aluminium can then be tapped out and formed into ingots or solid aluminium when it cools down. And this is how we obtain pure aluminium from bauxite. So remember, purification is done first by the Bayer process. Bauxite is made into alumina first. And then, aluminium is extracted from alumina by using the hall herald process, which is using an electrolytic cell. That's it for today, guys. I hope you've learned something. If you have, please do hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe. I will be producing at least one video a week. I'll see you in the next video.